Good morning. Happy Friday. Today, I'm here for episode number 11 of the Friday planning series, and I'm going to be talking about tips to put out fires instead of putting out fires to start your own fires and what happens um, when we are constantly working in a mode of putting fires out and how that affects our our self, our planning, and um, moving forward in a more calm state, okay? So I'm gonna wait just a few minutes. I hope everyone had an amazing week. Um, what a great week we had, right? What was the success that you had this week? And focus on the all the days of the week and not just the five Monday through Friday of waiting for Friday to come and then just focusing on Saturday and Sunday so what a great week we had right so every Friday I love coming because every single Friday I come with my coffee mug so I could sit and have a coffee with you and chat a little bit about uh, whatever is on my mind or on people's minds that let me know what they want to hear and learn more about and today the call is going to be about igniting was my power word so igniting your own fires and not you know living and putting out your fires constantly and before we get started I'm going to show you my mug so today my mug is Salesforce mug so a little backstory about Salesforce so Salesforce has truly changed our lives in our house um, and my husband is very proficient in Salesforce he holds like 18 certifications and when I decided that I wanted to try to transition into my own business from being in the insurance industry for 28 years he had vamped up his work and started really utilizing Salesforce and from that has just created some amazing opportunities and from the amazing opportunities I have been able to meet some amazing women um, in tech that I get to work with that are my clients so Salesforce has truly transformed both of our lives and our family's life and the funny thing is is they they have this trailhead and they have these great little stickers and our youngest loves the stickers and she wants these stickers and in order to get them she has to go on and get these trailhead badges and and even our oldest son got to go to uh, Dreamforce out in San Francisco through college so Salesforce has been an amazing amazing company for us in our home so a little bit about that I hope you come and have a mug that brings feelings for you like what are the memories so usually I bring mugs from different places that I've been but today I saw the Salesforce mug and I felt compelled to share that one with you so getting on our topic question for you how many of you start your work day? We'll go for work first. Start your work day by looking at your emails. Okay? When we start by actually looking at our emails on a daily basis, it's all of a sudden any planning that we've done beforehand goes out the window. And we're just focusing on whatever the task at hand is. And we get caught up in those emails. And before we know it, we could spend hours and now it's lunchtime and we have got nothing done that we were planned to getting done so one of the tips then is don't start off with your emails don't read your emails if you're gonna read them be true and kind to yourself and just flag the ones that you need to bring attention to later because in your planning process Whatever day that's going to be, Friday afternoon or on Sunday, you're going to sit down and plan your day out and plan your week out. That's when you put in there when you're going to be checking emails, okay, and actually doing the work on your email. The beautiful thing about this is you can actually change your signature block to say when you check your emails. And if it's an emergency, please give me a call or 
just be prepared. I'll re you know, I'll respond to this email within 24 hours or set the expectations. That is really the very first tip if you're in business um, or even even personally if you're not in business in your home and you still have your emails that you're getting from coaches and teachers and everything else, right? So you're managing both worlds. Set the expectation of when you're going to respond back to them, right? So that is the first tip in trying to set your own fires, right? Set a blaze of excitement and action by checking your emails at a later time and letting everybody know that. So another tip is when we feel overwhelmed, right? And we're feeling like we're constantly running and we're putting out all these fires, what does that mean? To me, and to what I've noticed working with my clients, what that means is that we have said yes, or you have said yes to too many things, and now you're totally overwhelmed. And you might have tried to get out of something, but they won't let you get out of it. Setting the boundaries around that will help you not live in just putting out fires and running from one thing to another. Okay, so the first the first tip was was all about right all about checking your email later or if you are checking your email, make sure you flag the ones that are important and then check those emails during the slotted time that you have planned in your planner for the week ahead. Okay, and the other one is being overwhelmed when we're overwhelmed. We've said yes to too many things. We're running around, and it's not giving us the proper amount of time that we need to energize ourselves. You have to have that white space on the calendar. So if you have your planner out and you plan everything and somebody needs to meet with you on Wednesday night, and because you have sat down and you, t you did a plan and you looked at it, and they said, how about Wednesday night we get together? And you look, and if you didn't have a plan, and you just said, yeah, I could do Wednesday, and then come to find out you're already booked every single night during the week, and Wednesday night was your only night home, what's going to happen? You're going to become frustrated, and you're going to be tired, and you're going to be overwhelmed. You're not going to be showing up anywhere as the best version of yourself. So put that fire out by setting your boundaries, okay? Put it out by setting your boundaries. So the next, the next one that I wanted to talk about, the next tip was, and it kind of went in the, the first two, is so important, is to be clear and concise on what you want your outcome to be. This way there's no confusion. And they can't come back to you and say, well, I didn't think you said that, right? Or is that what you really meant? Yeah, we have to be clear and concise, even when we're talking to our children. So if I'm talking with our daughter and I tell her something, I ask her to repeat it back to me. And why is that? Because then I know she heard me correctly. And it helps her to solidify it in her brain, okay? Because a lot of times I would say something, she'll, well, you said this, and it's like, no. Has that happened to you before? Not only at home with the kids, but maybe in work. Somebody comes and they give you all this information, and you just take it all down, and then they walk away. And you're in the middle of figuring it out, and you're missing a piece because they came at you too quickly. Ask them to slow down, maybe, maybe send it in an email to you and then have a conversation so it's clear and concise. And you review that email during the time that you can, or they write it down, or there's some kind of way that you guys could be very clear with the outcome. This is gonna help, help from you having to put out a fire later because either the due date was wrong or something came up that wasn't wasn't right. So step number three or tip number three, be clear 
with your message and make sure you could hear what they're saying to you clearly. Listen and then write it down, okay? And repeat it to them. There's, let me understand this. You need me to do this. This is the due date on this project. This is the outcome that you want to have. This is going to help put out the fire later. You're going to be able to blaze it with your best ability because you know exactly what they need. Okay? So that's tip number three. Um, so as we go through this, I wrote down so I wouldn't forget anything. Be organized. Be organized. So tip number three was be clear. Tip number four is to be organized. So how do we put out fires if we're organized? If we're organized, we probably don't have to put out as many fires. So think about that. Think about your night, okay? How do you organize your night? Kids come home from school, they do homework, unload the dishwasher, make dinner, clean up, right? You have a plan, and hopefully there's a process in place, because then if there's a process in place, it's less likely you're scrambling at the end. Now, I'm not saying that I'm perfect at that, because I'm not, and but I know how it feels on both ends of the spectrum. I know how it feels when... I plan out the meals for the week, right? And I know what's going on. I know how it feels when I have exercise on my calendar or going to mass or spiritual reading on my calendar. It's less likely for me to miss those things. So how does it feel for you to plan out your week? And really be organized with what you have to do. So now you take a Friday or a Sunday or Saturday morning to plan for the week ahead, right? You sit down, you have your planner. Be organized. Think about what you're going to have for dinner that week. Think about what the lunches are going to be. Think about when you're going to do laundry or anything that sets you in a tailspin. Okay, so if, you, if your kids have um, a sport and all of a sudden that morning you notice that uniform is not clean, so what happens? You are having to put out fires to get the uniform cleaned beforehand, right? There's ways that we could prepare for this. The problem is, is that a lot of times people think that they don't have enough time to plan. And really, reality is if we don't set the time aside to plan, then that's when all the fires happen, okay? So be organized. Think about what you need to get done in a day and try to set time slots for that. Because remember, we may not think we have time to pack lunches at night and do the laundry when we need to, but we always find the time when it's an urgency to get it done. So the time is available, it's just what are we doing with the time, okay? What are you doing with the time? Now, we're gonna go to um, tip number five, and that is, this is my big one, that is, being grounded in your purpose. If we know exactly what it is that we want or that we need, can you hear my kitty <laughs> meowing in the background? Um, if we know exactly what it is that we want and what the outcome is, we will be more likely to be able to stay grounded in that purpose. Okay? So, one of my very first nuggets was live within your purpose and not driven by your circumstances. Well, in this case, the purpose is where you're blazing your fire, okay? Where you're setting yourself on fire. Like, like it's just awesome, right? Life is good. That is the purpose here. The circumstances are all the things that we have to deal with, all the fires we need to put out. 
Now, as we go through and we plan that, it seems like it could be overwhelming, right? But if we take a deep breath and step back and really think about it and start doing a mindset shift around that, we'll know that it's okay and the time is there. Hold on. Excuse me. Look who's here. This is midnight. So midnight, midnight wanted to go outside. So I should have put that fire out before I got on Facebook Live and um, let him outside, and then he wouldn't have disturbed um, the flow here. But I think everything's going really well, and I hope you're finding that these tips are helpful for you. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to give a quick review on them, so you could have an opportunity to um, start implementing them. And I would love to hear how how it's going. Um, with implementing you blazing your own fire instead of putting out the fires okay and um, it's so amazing how things just continue to grow and I'm able to continue to come here every single Friday and share these tips in this planning Friday planning series can you believe it's episode number 11 already um, they're being uploaded to my YouTube channel and also, um, you'll get them if you're on my email list. They'll be in my Sunday Thoughts email. So you could uh, review it then also. And to get on that email list, all you have to do is go out to my website. And you'll get daily nuggets that will align with what these calls or what these, this series is all about. Because my power word this week was Ignite. So that's how I came up with the idea of the planning series. So every single day this week, my nugget of the day for you was all about setting, setting your own fires, right? Knowing about being clear and concise. All of the tips were in those nuggets, and I love bringing it all together here at the end of the week, okay? At the end of the work week. So as we review... We're going to go through the tips, the five tips, right, to ignite or blaze your own fire and not have to live by putting out your fires. And tip number one it was the emails. Stay away from using your emails as your to-do list, as your action list. Um, promote looking at those emails. If you need to go through them in the morning, um, go ahead and scan them quickly and flag the ones that you're going to need direct attention to when the time is on your calendar to go ahead and do those, okay? Try to do that the best that you can because we don't want you to go down the rabbit hole of looking at emails, just like checking social media, right? But once we get on social media, where what happens? We go into the vortex of, and before we know it, half hour, 40 minutes have gone by of not being productive. So save that stuff for the time of day that, um, especially the social media searching um, time of day when it's not your productive hours, okay? So go ahead and don't use email as your list. Tip number four, I mean, four, where did I go? Tip number two, okay? Tip number two is um, if we're overwhelmed, we've said yes to too many things. Take time to plan ahead so you know what you could say yes to and what you will say no to. If it's not serving you, Say no. And that's not being selfish because if it's not serving you, you're not going to show up as the best version of yourself anyways, okay? So take the time and look at that. Take the time and plan so you could not be overwhelmed and, again, set your own blaze of what you want the week to be. 
and not putting out fires because you've double booked yourself and you have to be in triple different places. I know it happens sometimes and I'm not saying it doesn't happen to me because it does. But when it happens to me, it is I don't like the feeling. So I try to stay in the mindset of being focused on the commitments that I have committed to and not saying that we can't do that in the future, but not right now, okay? So uh, tip number three is be clear and concise with your message. That's gonna help you stay focused. And that's gonna help you understand what the other person might want from you or what you want from that other person. Ask them to repeat it to you if they ask you to do something. Let me get this straight. You need me to do this and you want it done on this date. Okay, and then transfer that right to your planner so you have it and you're not missing anything along the way. Okay, and tip number four be organized. Be organized. Have a plan in place. I know I keep on going back to the plan, right? But have a plan in place of what does it look like for an afternoon routine? What does it look like at dinner time or after dinner or in the morning? Have that all set out because if you have it all set out, then you're not scrambling around to get things done, okay? And um, the other thing I wanted to mention real quick was using the DEER technique that I have on my website, Delegate, Execute, Automate, Recycle, will help you with the organization, okay? So it'll help you ahead of time with that. My website is powerful-purpose.com, and what I truly am loving to do is helping women, specifically women, um, find their vision. What is their vision? And then we create an action plan, and I help them stay accountable to that action plan. So in a month or two, they say to me, Pam, I can't believe I'm already here, and why did I wait so long? And I tell them, don't worry about the wait. It's all in the journey. You're here now, okay? So between that and my Take Back My Life system, coaching system that I have, that you could get more information about that also on my website, or I would welcome a conversation to talk to you to see where you are on putting out fires or starting your own blazes reach out to me i'd love to talk to you have a dynamite weekend until next time i wish you all well start those blazings live in your purpose and not driven by those circumstances in your life Thank you, and I'm honored that you watched and stayed with me, and God bless. Mm -hmm. <laughs>